arcade gal and uh, last night we had a little bit of a get together with some friends to play uh, arcade games which is kind of the cool thing you can do when you have an arcade in your house um, and the last couple of months I've been working on the Centuri videos if you check those out thanks for checking them out and uh, the responses have been really kind of nice but long story terrible I haven't spoken about the new addition to the game room, which is this little cabaret battle zone, which is a pretty obscure version of the battle zone game. So let's uh, let's check it out. Okay, so they made about eleven thousand plus or minus uh, battle zone uprights, the full size upright game, and battle zone came out in the very last part of nineteen eighty. It was developed around the same time as another game that was very similar called Red Baron. And Red Baron originally was supposed to come out first, but I guess the delays in its production, Red Baron came out not until about eight months after Battlezone, and its production was rather low. But they only made about 2,000 of these cabarets. And uh, as you can see, the amazing thing about this cabaret, and I think they shared the same cab design with the Asteroids Deluxe Cabaret, is that it's pretty tiny. Even if we look next to the Centipede Cabaret, which is already pretty small, it's not only about four inches shorter, but it's also about four inches less in depth as well. It's uh, the smallest game in our collection now. It's pretty tiny, um, but it's pretty neat. Let's look in the back real quick. All right, so let's open up the back here. And as you see, we still have the original instructions on the back. A lot of these times, these instructions tend to get eaten or destroyed by little creatures, so this one's not, it's not in perfect shape, but it's in pretty good condition. It's kind of nice that it's there. If we look inside, the, um, it's a little more cramped in here than most Atari games just because the size of the cabinet. We have the traditional Atari power supply with the original Big Blue still, which um, sometimes I'll replace those. I didn't replace it though because it, it tested fine and there was no problem with it. And obviously we cleaned this out pretty extensively. Um, audio regulator board, this board isn't a, a lot of Atari games. Um, you see this, it's pretty common. Um, different variations of it though. Um, you have the main battle zone board and what they call the auxiliary board. One of the main problems you run into with these boards, and we had a problem with this, we were, ended up replacing all the ROMs. Back in here, they're all brand new. The ROM sockets uh, tend to deteriorate a lot of times on battle zone for some reason, and it's not a bad idea to replace those as well. We're missing the coin bucket, unfortunately, which is a little different for the cabaret, so I had to track one of those down. And then we have the monitor, and this is an Electrohome Geo 5. This is not the monitor that came with the game. It was a V2000, which is the variant uh, made by Walsh Garner. It's pretty much compatible, but I couldn't get the high voltage side to, to work no matter what I did, at least correctly. So um, I got this Geo 5 and rebuilt it. And instead, it looks pretty good. One of the more interesting things, if you look on the bottom here where the speaker is on this cabaret, it's, it's underneath the coin bucket and it has like this kind of bellows box and it creates a vibration. Um, and I don't, I don't know if this would be considered a subwoofer or not, maybe, but it creates a vibration when the tank goes and it, it, it's kind of clever actually. It works pretty effectively, but um, yeah, that's the inside. It's pretty compact in here. Uh, somebody at some point put a fan in here. I don't think this is factory at all. And uh, I took the fan out because the fan was just cruddy and I didn't like the way it was wired. But I guess that's not a bad idea to keep it cool. So, you know, I didn't try to patch or fill this at all. Atari cabarets did not originally have side art. They just came from the factory as wood grain and you actually had to order the side art decals if you so desired, and most people never really elected to put them in because cabarets were really designed mostly for places where traditional arcade games would be out of place. Now, I would normally be opposed to putting in side art on cabarets because I think it looks kind of dorky. It's just my personal opinion. But the reason I put it on this one, as you'll see, is there was a lot of heavy damage to the sides of this cabinet, and it's, and it's also puckered a little bit. 
So instead of going through the whole process of re-veneering it or putting a laminate on it, uh, we patched it the best we could and then we put the side art, which is a Phoenix Arcade, makes the side art from the original 3M negatives. Um, so this is about as close as you could possibly get unless you have a DeLorean and go in a time machine and buy it from Atari in the early 80s. Uh, so it's it's authentic and it looks pretty good. It's uh, it's kind of phallic looking, but you know it's um it's pretty close to the original design of the full size upright as well. Just the these guys are in different places. These kind of target and, and dials and things on the design for the upright, but it looks pretty good and it covers up the damage pretty well from where it had some pretty serious gouges on the side of this particular cabinet. Okay, so here is the game as we got it. I bought this from a fellow collector here in the Seattle era who was really more into pinball machines than arcade games. Uh, it seemed to be playing blind when we first got it, and overall it was in pretty nice shape. It was complete, and typical dirty had been sitting around for a while uh, inside and out. As you can see there, uh, taking off the shroud. Um, complete making noises, seeming like it was playing, and what I did was I actually hooked up this monitor is my monitor from the Asteroids Deluxe Cocktail, which is the same monitor, and behold, it was indeed working. So I tried to rebuild the monitor that had come with it, and I actually already had another backup V2000 monitor as well. I recapped it, changed a bunch of resistors and transistors and the high voltage side and the diode, um, these little bottle cap uh, transistors, which are pretty common to fail. And no matter what I did, this went on for about a month. Here's a very dirty one, high voltage side I bought off eBay. Um, couldn't get it to work. I got a partial working, half working, smelling, and I just broke down and bought a Geo5 from another collector. So I got the other Geo5 to look pretty good. Here you can see that it's a little crooked. Um, we'll fix that in a second here with the adjustment of the purity rings. But I recapped this monitor, I put a new diode on it, and there you go, and it's starting to look good. Uh, the contrast is a lot better there as well. So at that point I turned my attention to things like the power supply, which were pretty dirty. Um, just clean them up, um, recap the audio regulator board above it. Uh, here you can see a very dramatic picture. That fan is still in there on the right. I ended up taking that out. It was super noisy and dirty. And the game was starting to look good. And then we started addressing the cabinet. Uh, coin door and the metal bracket. I sanded those down and painted them. I didn't powder coat them this time. I know that drives some purists crazy, but you know, oh well. They still look pretty good. I'm pretty good actually at painting these things. So you can see the sides there. Uh, pretty gouged pretty terrible um, and these pictures actually make it don't, not look quite as bad as it was so I ordered the side art from the people at Phoenix Arcade who did this great reproduction of this side art you can almost not call it a reproduction since they make it from the original Atari 3M negatives I planned out where I wanted it since it's it's kind of a strange shape and doesn't quite fit on the cabinet like you would think and then for that point I kind of marked off where I needed to fill with plastic wood and sand so I wouldn't get weird bubbles or marks showing through the side art. Some of these gouges you can see they're, they're pretty significant and we just used a real fine sanding there. Um, I'm not sure what my wife is doing back there. Something very productive I'm sure. Anyway, um, so we played out the art making sure it was even as possible and we put it on. There you go and it looks great. Um, covers up almost all of that damage and the rest of it I couldn't cover up. I retouched with the retouching kit and we continue to clean and it's looking good we're getting pretty close here uh, we bought new gels for the monitor the green and the red and there you go it's looking good and of course right after this picture the ROMs failed and uh, had to burn new ROMs and take care of that but then it was fine and ready to join its sister the centipede cabaret there in the game room so Battle Zone, it's pretty interesting how the cabaret is set up compared to the full size upright. The full size upright, the initial run had this kind of faux periscope that you looked through, uh, which operators actually didn't like because then other patrons who weren't playing couldn't quite see what was going on. And some people, if you're short, maybe had a hard time looking at it. They made another run of Battle Zone in 81 that I think was also probably just left over. Red Barons they couldn't sell. 
uh, that, or maybe it was vice versa with the Red Barons that had the open face and didn't have the periscope. So the Cabaret, again, they only made 2,000 of these. And this one actually is number 1,987, which means it was one of the last ones ever off the assembly line. And so you don't have the periscope. So it's just a piece of smoked glass. And underneath here is a kind of a faux cardboard thing that outlines the little radar detector and even though it looks like it's in color, this is just a gel that goes over top of the black light monitor to give the illusion of color. And it's actually pretty effective, it, especially at night. It just, vector is so magical in so many different ways. Um, then you have your two controllers, which only go up or down. And one of the big problems with these controllers in general is there's a little centering bellows inside them that it's shared with a couple other games like Red Baron and Food Fight uses a very similar bellows. It might be the same one actually. Um, but they break and they wear down and people do make reproductions a lot of times, but if you have one of these games, eventually you're gonna need those bellows to replace it. This one's pretty taut on this side. Uh, this one, let's see, it's pretty loose. And this is actually broken, um, the stick, it's actually held together by electrical tape. So at some point I'm gonna need to find a replacement left side stick. It's functional and it works fine. It's just not ideal. The other thing I think is interesting with a control panel is that this is painted on metal. This is silk screen on metal, the design, compared to later Atari games, just like the centipede next to it, where it's a decal over top of a piece of metal for the control panel. And a lot of times when you see the cabarets, the these have gotten rusted and pitted. And this one is actually in surprisingly good shape. We didn't really have to do a lot to this game. And I, I'm hesitant to call this a restoration. We'll call it more of a, I guess, a light retooling or sprucing up of the game to make it functional and appear pretty well. And uh, it would be great to have a new piece of smoke plexi, the piece of cardboard underneath it with the graphics. It's not in the greatest shape. They do make reproductions of those. When I was trying to keep this one as original as possible to uh, kind of maintain its, well, it's, its originality, I guess. Okay, so if you've never played Battlezone before, it's a wireframe 3D tank game that was pretty darn innovative for the fact that it's 40 years old. Um, so we're gonna play it real quick. If you've never seen it, I got my quarter. So all of our games at our arcade work on quarters. We don't do free play in this house. So put it in there and our button lights up. And it's only a one player game. Can't play doubles on uh, this one, which is kind of funny. And then we have our controllers. And then you want to line up. This first tank won't shoot at you and then you shoot. And I can go forward or backwards or spin around and uh, Part of this game is you have to keep on moving or these guys will murder you. And you can't just spin around. And I have my radar up there that shows me where I'm going. Let's see, this guy's gonna shoot at me. Ooh, I got him. So, and you can hide behind these three-dimensional shapes. Oh no! And then eventually, let's see if we, I think I just heard that little radar guy. Oh, oh. oh we're gonna get murdered. Yeah, we got murdered. So, war as hell, y'all. Let's see, we go. So obviously, just kind of this 3D environment, you know, in the era of two-dimensional games, this was pretty amazing stuff. And of course, famously, Atari also designed a version of this game for the military, which Atari engineers weren't really excited to work on. Oh, so here's the. Uh, There we go. All right, now we got a guy on our tail, so we're gonna try not to die. Ooh, oh no, I'm stuck behind a rock. Oh well. There you go. You can put your initials in, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then there are other things like there are missiles and things called super tanks, and the the scores just expand. And this little volcano, animated volcano, is always kind of a favorite with vector fans. And uh, it's pretty timeless. It's 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 a pretty amazing game for the era, just because you know having a three dimensional environment like this, you could really only do it on vector at this point. And uh, you can see why people got excited about this game and the um, 
I don't know. It's just it's just way ahead of its time, I guess. So there is the Battlezone Cabaret, which is great because you're kind of running out of space in the home arcade. So having a very tiny game um, makes it a little easier to sink one more in here. We have 17, 18 upstairs right now. I think 17. And I'm rebuilding The Simpsons downstairs right now. I have another video. If you like the Centuri video, I'm doing another one similar to that on the history of something else, but uh, my school term starts in about a week and a half, so we'll see what I can squeak out and get done uh, for those. But that's pretty much it. Uh, that's the Battle Zone Cabaret. Thanks for watching. Happy honey, and I'll see you later. Bye.